So in this short video, um, our goal is to compare the approaches to derive the Lindbergh type of Sinclair theorem for strictly stationary random process and our approach by specification. In the first case, assume the measure here, this mu, to satisfy the K property with respect to the given stationary random process, which is uh, Xi, okay? And here, um, it basically says that if I and J are very far away from each other, then Xi and, it, and Xj are independent, okay? Are almost independent, let's say that way, when I and J are very far away from each other. Um, so we know that Lindbergh type of central limit theorem is only applied can only be applied when we consider the independent independent random variables. So to reconstruct some independency from the stationary random process, we look at the orbit and we need to cut this orbit into different orbit segments. Um, so we cut it this way. Um, the way we cut that is we have the blue parts to be the essential collection of orbit segments that carries the information and we have the gaps between blue ones to be the to be those gaps that are created to make the adjacent blue ones independent or almost independent of each other. And uh, we know this can be done because we know mu satisfies such K property, right? So um, we can see in this case that if we make, put this to be GN, the gap of G, the length of the gap at nth step to be GN and here PN is the length of the essential collection of orbit segments at step N. And then you know your GN must go to infinity, right? Because um, you want to make the adjacent blue ones more and more independent, then you want to apply this into the theorem. And then you want to make sure that the gaps will not cause trouble or will not change your limit distribution for the a gothic sum or a gothic integral over the whole orbit segment because you know um, when you apply central limit theorem you apply the labor type of central limit theorem to independent random variables you only apply the labor type of central limit theorem to these blue ones okay but you when you have the blue ones you always you also have to consider the red ones you want to consider the red ones but the red ones are not included and the red ones are getting to infinity. So you still want to make these red ones to be negligible regarding the distribution. So what can you do? You have to make your PN to go to infinity faster than GN. And then we assume that we have KN many repetitions. So KN many orbit segments. Uh, and the Kn is just like the number of independent random variables, right? So you want to make Kn to go to infinity as well, and actually Kn goes to infinity in the lowest rate. So this is what you have in the first case. And then in the second case, we actually have something similar. So recall that we have the typical orbit segments to be EL, you know, the um, close regular geodesics, with enough hyperbolicity, right? And then uh, these are chosen in an independent way, in fact. So they are by themselves independent. You don't have to create gap to make them independent. And you don't have assumptions on the K property. But you know, these gaps, are so, I'm sorry. So these orbit segments are chosen from different orbit segments, right? From different orbits. So they're not from the same orbits, but your agadic sum, agadic integral is in terms of one single orbit. So you have to create an orbit 
using all these orbit segments, shorter orbit segments. And then you, this is how you apply specification, right? So you have the specification to create a real orbit. And here you still have the gap. But in this case, the gap is created by specification. So the sources for the gaps are not the same, right? So here the gap on the top, the gap is here to make blue ones, they're, they're, they are there to create independency, right? And here uh, in the second case, in our case, you know, this is caused by specification. And you know, G is actually by specification, specification this is fixed because you know the gap is um the gap is the the shadowing scale is always the same the gap is fixed or at least bounded from the bow um and uh but we know in the first case we still we just work on the same orbit it's like we're not moving away from the or orbit but in the second case you know you can expect a central limit theorem on the product set of EL, right? This is because you have the EL to be chosen in an independent way, then you can have a prototype central limit theorem. Um, so we want to kind of push the central limit theorem on the product set forward to our resulting red shadowing orbits and get the Lindbergh type of central limit theorem there. So that is um, the motivation for how we get the central limit theorem in this case. And you can see that it is related. The idea is similar to what we have in the, uh, in the more classic setting, right? Um, and here we also want to say something about the difficulty in the flow case. So in the flow case, you know, um, so here we choose EL to be um, the closed regular geodesic with enough hyperbolicity whose period is between TL minus delta L and TL. And here we know that is the continuous case, so we do have discrepancy within the period of the closed geodesics in one single EL. And, uh, and, then, and then we know that we want to, so essentially we want to figure out the central limit theorem of our given measure of maximum entropy. So that is the target measure we're looking at. We actually construct these uh, orbit segments so that we have the measure over there and it converge weak star in weak star topology to the to the measure of maximum entropy. But we first want to make sure that our limit measure is flow invariant, right? So to make our limit measure flow invariant, you have to construct your new L, which is the measure we use to approximate the measure of maximum entropy. You want to make the limit measure to be um, flow invariant, so you want so you want your new L to be an average measure along the along the orbit segment along the short orbit segment. Therefore, a new L looks like an integral. But then you look at a got integral by itself. Then you have double integral. When you have double integral. You have something like this, right? But you cannot look at TL once again, right? Because if you look at TL, then you, for example, you think about S and T, it'd be both very large, and then S plus T is very large, and then it, it runs away from the first gap, it runs into the second gap. But you want the first gap and second gap to be independent from each other. So you don't really want that. So you just want to rotate in your in the neighborhood of the first orbit in the in the neighborhood of or the first closed geodesic for many 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 times. Okay, you rotate for many 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 times, and then you move forward, and then you continue this process 
in a second loop for many, many, many times, and then you move forward. So this is the way where you can actually make this uh, approximation effective. But in this way, you know, when you rotate that many times, since you have discrepancy in the period, this will accumulate, okay? Like you, like you rotate many, many times and you have very small discrepancy, which is at most delta L. It, it's small if you only rotate it just for once, but if you rotate many, many times, then it will cause trouble. And uh, so the issue is to actually balance such variations brought by small delta L and the large, you know, and the large rotation numbers. So that is one of the main issues.